sorry you guys um you know my whole life I've been such a people pleaser and I've been a person that like ignored what the spirit was telling me to do but I did things out of guilt which is flesh you know a servant of the Lord is the greatest in the kingdom right but it has to be spirit led if you're being led by not wanting to displease people that's not spirit led that's your flesh guilting you that's the devil trying to guilt you into doing stuff that the Lord probably don't want you to do I heard I heard this pastor on TikTok live a couple days ago and I was like that's fire he's like He's like, okay, you know, if you're feeding the sheep, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll feed my sheep to Peter, right? But, and then when you think about it, you know, if the, the, the things that you're doing and you're going out of your way to help people, are those the Lord's sheep? You know what I mean? The ones who are consistently denying him and don't want to hear nothing you have to say, but because you feel obligated to go out of your way to help them when they don't get any edification from you being there, at least you're not seeing the fruits of that. You know, but praise God, but you know, it's just, I'm not saying never help people who are not listening to you, listen to you about Christ, right? But um, in reality, your loyal your loyalty has to be number one to God, nobody else. And it's to the point where it's like I couldn't even sit down with someone and have a meal who denies Christ straight up. That's how loyal I am to God. That is my savior. That is our savior. He is the only love that this world has ever known. That he who knew no sin became sin and died for our transgressions. He, he, he went to the cross and he did nothing wrong. And people are always going to find something wrong with you. People are always going to say stuff about you that they're trying to discredit your sanity or how how not of a nice person you are they want to they want to say that you know you're rude or you aren't uh you know stable they want to discredit you in that type of way you know I, i've experienced that a lot i've watched people in my family call people crazy that are the most stable because uh even when jesus did nothing wrong and all he did was heal the sick and get people delivered and get people to listen to the message of repentance um, and, you know, repenting of your sins and turning to Christ and having faith and living by faith and not having, you know, works be your atonement. People still hated him. Even when he literally healed people and raised people from the dead, they still found a way to make him the villain in their heads. And they're always going to do that to the Christ followers. Even people in your own family, even people who you were friends with. They're going to find a way somehow, no matter all the good that you have done and all the good that you do to find you to be the villain. But I encourage you and I encourage myself, the Holy Spirit, encourage me to always think of the good that people have done in your, in your life. Even when people are super falling short of the glory of God, which we all do, right? Think about the good things that they've done. Focus on the good in them as much as possible. Even if you have to keep a distance because you got you to gotta keep your spiritual health healthy so you can be a blessing and mutually edifying for people who have an ear to listen and eyes to see and has an open heart and they're, and they're ready to receive love. But you might not be that person for everybody, right? You might not be the person to lead every person to Christ. And there's some people that you don't want to, you need to talk to. There are some people that the Lord doesn't want you to talk to, okay? So, you know, and that's, that's, that's another thing is when you get on fire for Christ, like, um, everybody's not your mission. Everybody's not your, everybody's not your obligation. The Spirit will tell you. When you step with the Lord and you get into your alone time and your quiet time with God, you know what God's telling you. When you have sick feelings in your stomach, when you, you know, He shows you with the way that He he gives you an unction in your heart. He shows you how to live your life and what to listen to and what to just throw away and what wisdom to listen to on people, you know, um, to pick off because not everybody in this world has completely exactly, uh, sound doctrine sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, but it's not for us to hate on everyone and call everyone out and correct everyone. Um, because we all have a narrow path. So if you have questions about things and you really need help in your life, there's life coaches out there that are going to help you. And there's pastors out there that can help you. But all in all, the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. 
And I encourage you, do whatever you can to edify yourself in the Holy Spirit with your eyes, what you're watching at all times, what you're hearing, what you're doing with your hands. We sing a church song for the little kids is be careful little eyes what you see and then it goes all the way down little ears what you see mouth what you say hands what you do feet where you go that's very 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 important you have to be choosy if you want to edify your spirit and you want to live in the spirit you got to preserve that you can't be going out of your way to be hanging out with worldly people all the time just because you're guilty about it and you feel like you have to you don't have to do anything that the holy spirit is not telling you to do and you have to absorb that in your mind. And I have to tell myself that every day because of the, the heart that I have for people. Um, I have to tell myself, I'm like, I don't have to do this. But I sometimes feel obligated by my, my flesh makes me feel like obligated. Right? But sometimes people's salvation is depending on you putting up a boundary. They said, whoa. They say, whoa, okay. You know, eventually. They might be mad at first. They might be upset. But eventually they might come asking you some questions. They might come asking you about Jesus. It's funny because I know people that don't want to hear nothing about Christ when I talk to them. But as soon as something hits the fan and one of the, one, somebody's in the hospital, they're calling me for prayer. It's crazy. It's crazy. Because this is perfect peace. Those who love the Lord, he will keep them in perfect peace. You know, and sometimes your mind will, will wander, your mind will drift, but he will keep you in perfect peace because he has, he has your life set before you. You just got to be ready and submitted and ready to do his will. A willing vessel, not wanting to compromise, to backslide, not having it in your heart to even backslide because the, the, the worldly desires don't literally mean nothing to somebody who loves Christ. Praise God. So that's my message today, you guys. Um, edification, not entertainment. Praise the living God.